hello, hello, hello. <laughs> We're here. I love your podcast voice, Cindy. Is, is that my podcast voice? <laughs> as soon as you press record, I got to... I'm trying to be next quiet storm. I love it. 22. I love it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, y'all. Soft and warm, quiet if I, storm. If I had a vagina, it would like drip. Would it? <laughs> Your booty could drip. Your vagina could drip for me. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I don't have a vagina. <laughs> I don't have a vagina. It just depends on the on what kind of drip directs us into what kind of conversation this ends up being but so my name is just heck and I am the- <laughs> you did that you did that by the way I, I, am, I am the podcaster from just another podcast are you yeah. okay i am cindy <laughs> lee i am the host of sex on shuffle sexing and shuffling and today we might talk about sexing and shuffling. We'll see what spirit leads. But we <laughs> thought about talking about balance within your life and what the hell does that even mean? Yes. Um, and how does it show up for us? Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So mm. talk to me. When you think about balance, what do you what is the first thing that comes to mind or what? What do you hear when I ask you, is your life balanced? Being even keel. Mm. Not being too much of any one thing. Mm. You know, just kind of, you know, it doesn't, things don't have to necessarily be the greatest in your life, but Mm. within yourself, you're able to manage yourself manage your emotions, manage your life and how things are day to day. Mm, 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 mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I just, I think my biggest thing is to make sure that we have space for our emotions because I feel like, I know for myself, we're conditioned to feel like emotions don't play a part in our life. And I feel like that's the opposite. Even if you don't really express your emotions, that shit will show up in whether or not um, totally. you're copacetic, right? And whether or mm-hmm. not you're even keel. Mm-hmm. It leaks um, out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You might say something that really has nothing to do with what's even going on at that moment, but that's you being angry or you being upset about something or you being sad or whatever the case may be. Mm. And you also have to understand that Anger is a mixture of emotions as well. It's Mm -hmm. it's a mixture of like being sad, being hurt. You know, it's it's a mixture and and anger is, it's almost like, almost like, you know, why, how could you do that to me? Why would you do that to me? You know what I mean? It's a lot of those, it's, it's a, you know, that's what I've learned, at least maybe for myself, I can speak. Mm. Um, some people might think differently but mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you can associate how you can talk you know speak about anger and if you dissect anger there is some hurt or there may there is some sadness there is dealing with something and mm-hmm. instead of being depressed or being really sad about it your thing is being totally angry and it's like okay I'm going to tell you this, or I'm going to exact my revenge or whatever, you know, but however, whatever anger leads you, whatever path it leads you down. It's interesting that anger is what comes up in terms of thinking about emotions, but I think anger is a valid emotion. And Mm -hmm. a lot of us are only conditioned to see anger as the only outlet, right. Or the most comfortable or the easiest way to navigate things. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I'm here for anger though. Like I'm here for anger and righteous <laughs> rage. Um, and, you know, overall wellness is important yeah. too. Yeah. So in thinking about 
what are the things that you do to keep yourself quote unquote balanced? Um, yeah, we'll start there. I do check-ins for myself. Mm. I do check-ins. Um, I just check in with myself uh, five, six times a day. Really? When I check in on myself in the morning, Mm -hmm. um, the mornings, it's like a 50-50 chance of, I think that's when I am the most rageful probably. Although, I, mm. you know, but it's more within myself, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't leech it out of anybody. Um, I just think about, I wake up and I'm like, oh God, I gotta be awake. You know what I mean? And mm. the, all the other things that are in my head are just like, oh God, okay. Why can't I be rich? Mm. Even though that, That's what that you one, wake up with. <laughs> Right. But then, you know, that, that wouldn't solve my problems. Anyway. But that, you know, yeah. those are things I'm just like, oh, God, I got to be awake. Why did mm. I go to sleep so late? Why, you know, this mm. is like blaming myself. But then I check in. I'm like, okay, yo, listen, relax. Go get mm -hmm. a bowl of cereal. Turn on the TV. Mm -hmm. New episode of Moon Knight on Disney Plus. That's a, that's a cheesy plug. Go watch that. Mm. Tell your job you're going to be late. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you got that option, just yeah, call. you know, say Disney is calling. <laughs> you know, you check in, and then as I'm walking mm -hmm. to the train, I'm checking in. You know, professionally and personally checking in. Okay, these mm -hmm. things I gotta do. Then, you know, then when I would like at lunchtime, I check in. Okay, what happened? What's going on? Is everything good? What's going? What could you do better? What what what's bothering you? If there's something, mm. um, then when I'm leaving to go home, when I get on the train, I'm checking in. Right? And then when I'm, I when I come out the train, I guess you could say I continue it. Mm. Um, or you know, so technically that might be four times, but I'm checking in. And then when you I lay quantified it. And then when I lay down, mm. I'm checking in. I'm reviewing my day and I'm like, mm. oh. I'm like oh. but that's that's what I do. And I and I, you know, I mean, I'm I'm a human being, so it doesn't always work. Mm. Or it doesn't, you know, balance is a really hard thing mm -hmm. for 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 me. Um, even though people don't get the sense of that. <laughs> you know you would think it's you know oh Hector got it he's okay mm. he's good um but that's not always the case mm -hmm. um and but I check in with myself to keep so that way you know I, that I can always because at the end of the day you have to rely on yourself mm. you're the first line of defense for anything yes you mm -hmm. can have a support system but you, you know, relying on that, you're going to end up setting yourself up because what if that support system isn't there? Mm. And you, then you just, it's, it comes back to you either way. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you know, the support system is a great add-on addition, mm -hmm. but you got to work. The work has to come from you. And that's what I do. It's tight. You know, it's everyday thing. It's mm. 365 days. It's, it's all going. And, you know, I mean, yes, I have trauma. Yes, I have, you know, I, there, there's stuff that I could go on about. Mm. Um, I've tried therapy that didn't work. Mm. <laughs> didn't work for me. I didn't, at least I didn't find the right person. I'm just like, I'm not going to keep searching. I got it, you know? Mm. So, you know, and that's really for like the people that are just like, Oh, you just got to go to therapy. You got to find the right person, you know? And it's like, it's like trying to find the right mate. <laughs> Shit is mm -hmm. hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit is hard. Mm -hmm. It ain't easy because you got to find the person that's really in, in, interested in, in what you're going through or whatever. And I had never mm -hmm. found that. So I was like, you know what? You know who really cares about what I'm going through? Me. So I'm going to work on that myself. 
That's interesting. So you need a therapist to be it, like, um, it sounds like you've had a therapist that maybe wasn't engaged or you felt they weren't interested in you and your, uh, in your not interested in you, like on a yeah. dating sense, but interested in no, you in no, terms no. of investment. I mean, you don't have to answer that, but it's, it, I'm, I, I understand. I think therapy is important, but it's, it's a tool, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a tool. If that tool is what works for you. Right. Um, there's other ways that we get healing from, and sometimes, you know, therapy is there from when it's helpful, but sometimes, you know, therapy has different ways of healing and not everybody's going to be the same, especially if we're talking about, you know, finding therapists that understand certain traumas or what it's like to have the lived experience of like a black or brown person or some other marginalized identity. Sure, um, so I get that. And I feel like it's a both end, right? Like balance in your life needs to show up. But I feel like balance for me also means balancing the other parts. Because uh, I feel like community is important and not at the detriment of you not being able to have your autonomy and be able to, to, to be centered and self-aware in that way, right? To be able to have those check-ins. I don't know um how many check-ins I have but I know checking in is what what grounds me right what centers me so when you feel those those influx of different emotions or feelings you can mm -hmm. you can step back or you could take a breath <clears throat> and have that conversation with yourself rather than that conversation being outside of you but I also understand the importance of having community right and having folks that hold each other accountable um without being uh feeling like you only can do that with other folks or feeling like like I, I feel like there needs to be a balance there too because I feel like we've been conditioned to be individual for so long and that shit ain't sustainable. I think after a while you realize that yes it's important for you to know you and know for self and don't throw your don't throw the folks in your life away, right? Or don't um, make it so that y'all are codependent either. So it's like playing with that. Other communities do that. Why can't we? I mean, we do. I feel like there's lots of instances where we do. And just like how you can say that on the outskirts, folks might look at you and be like, oh, you, you have it balanced. And you know that internally, that's a constant action. Right, we don't get this. Isn't a video game where we can get to a certain level and be like, all right, all right we good. We took care of all the traumas that shit that happened back in the day. It's not gonna creep up. It's yeah. always gonna be an opportunity where that slips back up, and that's why this shit is a practice. You're not gonna have it 100% all the time. It's gonna be different. You might have a plan for today, and if you have stuff going on in the morning, that's stuff that you have to check and redirect. Right, like how mm -hmm. we deal with change and how that fucks with you know our schedule like is that something where like you have anxiety and you're like oh what's this shit happen you know once something veers off course right. it takes a second to get back on mm -hmm. um i think it's recognizing that we all are different and we all have different ways of doing that and balancing that and that that there's not a specific expectation that, that sometimes some folks will be unrealistic about it because we are adults or because we're at a certain age when a lot mm -hmm. of us weren't brought up with you know understanding of emotional intelligence and how to regulate ourselves and shit like that so like emotional intelligence right <laughs> emotional intelligence growing up for me was yeah that happened i right, move on <laughs> and still that's still a thing <laughs> and, and you know in, in hindsight that shit did work because all of, you know, my parents and their, their, their generation damaged. Mm. And in, in the damage was apparent through the vices that they engaged in. Mm. You know, and, and, it, and it was just like, you know, they were, they're looking to numb the pain but it, but it's it's a pain that you can't speak about because mm. because if you speak about it, 
then you're admitting weakness. And so because it's the survival of the fittest, you know, you don't speak about your pain. You know, it, it's, you know, don't cry, get up. You're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, okay. And it, it's damaged, you know, that's my, my hat goes out to the youth of today who are like, they're super, they're super intelligent. <laughs> Their emotional intelligence is through the roof because mm. they're just like, that doesn't work for me, or I don't, I don't feel like that, or, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, like they're, they're quick to, they're, they're very in tune with themselves. Um, some might say a little too much, but that's what I, I mean. I don't, I don't know what's too much. Right. Um, so, you know, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, you know, emotional intelligence is, is something that I learned just a couple years ago. Like, mm. so, you know, it's, a, it's a practice. It's definitely a, a, a practice in, 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 you know, balance is, 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 is hard. Because like a seesaw, you can go up, you come down, you go up. But have you ever tried to just stay, you know, as a child, you ever tried to stay in that middle ground mm. and how hard that was because mm -hmm. each person had to set to themselves appropriately to the other person to stay that way. And mm -hmm. it was just like, you know, you could stay up, but as long as that person wanted to keep you there and then you mm -hmm. could, you stay down for as long as you wanted to be there. But to stay even, Kale, was just like, that was like the challenge. You know, we used to have a game where who could stay in the middle of the longest. Yeah. I never won. Part of my trauma comes from that, by the way. Not winning or not, seesaw? Not, not winning that seesaw <laughs> shit. That shit bothers me to this day. I don't know. That shit pisses Thank me you. off. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your truth. It's important. <laughs> it's important to let it out. <laughs> Yeah, so but yeah, it's 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 tough, and you know I it, I'm not balanced every day. Mm -mm. Who is? Mm -mm. Who is balanced every day? That's just you know it's you know you you just you you know you 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 we're all trying to figure it out until the the clock is up. Mm. And, you know that's it. But you know. I think I like um shout out to P the Fairy is somebody I follow who does a lot of stuff around spirituality and like human design and shit like that. But I like the way that they said um when it comes to balance, sometimes people think balance is like certain things have to be higher, like they always focus on the, the positive way of how balance should look like when there's so many parts of you that exist. I like when she was like, I'm not looking for balance. I'm looking for harmony, right? So like if all, you know, whether it's positive or negative, it's parts of myself. I just want them to get along in the ways that need to work today. So like if it, today is a pissed off day, yeah. it's not about not making me pissed because maybe there's valid reasons for why you're pissed. I could give you a list right now and I don't even know what happened in the news today, right? But it's how do we let these feelings be in the crib and be like okay right and 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 and, and still do whatever got to get done to the point of wellness though because I think a lot of times I know before when I was still living in New York I, I think now too I feel it I'm very present with waking up with urgency right because I feel like we're taught that urgency is what's necessary right when mm -hmm. urgency is a, a characteristic of white supremacy too, right? This movement that we gotta be, you laugh, but I'm dead ass. Um, hopefully y'all can do it work. This, this white supremacy plug is brought to you by Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm else. telling you, because think about what it would look like to just wake up at the time that you need to wake up and not feel like, I, that's it, I have to be on. Either I'm on in the crib or I'm on with my family or my kids, or I gotta be on as soon as I get out of here and I have the people in a in a in a pep in a pandemic, right? In a personal pan pizza, or I gotta be at work and the way that my supervisors are are keeping me in an urgency because I gotta get this shit done by an X amount of time. What do you think that's doing to like our stress levels? Some people thrive on that. And I 
I want to okay. honor that too. But okay. some people are like, you are frazzling the fuck out of me. And it's, mm-hmm. the anxiety is making it so that I'm, I'm being conditioned not to do work well, but to do work quickly, right? Depending on, you know, what, what, what you got to do it as far as like your everyday um, yeah. I profession or like things. That. Yeah, we've worked at places like that. Um, right. I, don't, I don't think the place where we worked together was like that. Mm. um because we kind of dictated we 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 held, then we we held the power in that but i've worked at places like that i thrive off that um just because i'm always in a position where people depend on me mm. to be that way and that's important to me that's important to me to be able to be that for that person and mm. for, for that that's important to me I thrive that's what helps me the person that is and that's everybody in my life mm. you know that that's everybody in my and I'm okay with that I'm more than okay with that because that's just me you know that's just who, who that's just part of you know the undertaking whether I go to work and I deal with a population <clears throat> that deals with super anxiety, super stress, mm. you know, deals with illness, various types of illness. <clears throat> and, you know, they, they look at me and they're like, you know, you know, you're good. So I'm going to, I'm working on that. And I'm like, you don't have to, but I'm here for you. Don't worry about right. it. I got you. That's just part of, you know, my job. Um, do I feel like sometimes I want that? Do I wish I could take a day off from that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's been moments. There's been moments where I've had that, but if it's so fleeting that I'm just like, you know, I, I, and it's mainly because I just do so many check-ins that I'm just like, okay, you know, and and I'm and I'm also careful as to. I'm good at like being able to delegate, mm. you know, and, and work with people in, and bring people in as a team so that it's not all on me, even though people would like want to give me the credit for it. And I'm just like, no, it's not, it's not me at all. Like we all did it. Right. But yeah, I mean, that's, and, and for the people that, 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 that had those feelings, I've, I've, I've been witness to them. Mm. And it's tough. It's tough. Um, and, it, it, you know, it's a struggle. My heart goes out to them because it's definitely, especially dealing with, like, anxiety. It You know, a panic attack feels like death. Mm. You've ever had one? Have you ever had a panic attack before? Me? Yeah. Um. Yes. But I don't know if it felt like death for me, but I have. Felt like, felt like I couldn't breathe. Yeah. That's I equate that to that's death. death. Yeah, that's <laughs> death. <laughs> you can't feel I'm like you can't breathe. To it. Yeah, like you like, oh shit, like, wait a minute. Why does my heart feel like that? Mm. Hey, nothing's really happening to your heart. It's your brain. Yeah. Your brain is the one overjuiced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that shit, that shit sucks. It's a hard but that, but that's what shows too that even somebody who thrives off of being in a leadership position or delegating or being of service to people, you that needs balance too. And mm-hmm. to the point because I've seen some, certain folks that will not know who they are or will not understand their enoughness or their perp like their worthiness without production without being of service to somebody when we you know a a part of that is conditioning too like you're enough you don't have to be the super person to save everyone all the time and if you feel like you're equipped to say you know what trust me enough that I know how to take care of myself so that I can help you. That's part, that's collective work. That's collective thinking to me. That's how community and being of service should show up in that, that again, balance within yourself, but then balance within how we show up for one another. Um, 
you know, I just want to, you know, show up for the folks who feel like they're always the strong person and feel like that's their personality. I want you to have a personality outside of that, right? Like I want you to feel enoughness and feel like you don't have to go above and beyond to be worthy of friendship or love or purpose or to be alive in this earth. Like so many people feel like they have to do a thing or be a thing or produce a thing in order to be a human. I would like to have human rights. Yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. I, again, you know, there were people who feel like that like on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. and you know it's there is a conditioning to that it totally is um, and I mean it's <clears throat> I mean we can't you know I guess we can root it in white supremacy but I think a lot of that still comes from us and we need to be able to see it for what it is because it's funny it it, it, i'm gonna be honest when i work for people of color it's like go 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 when and i and i've only had maybe two supervisors that were white my whole life that were Caucasian. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they were the ones that were like, well, wait, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. Like, let's talk about this. But that's think about at, this. that's person specific though, right? No, like, no, no. People- and I and I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Because we, you know, it dates back. It goes back to and it's generational. But what I'm also saying is too, is that we also have to take accountability for ourselves as well. I think that. You know, we're all, you know, whether it's generational or not, there there are, you know, it also comes from within us. And we have to be able to check ourselves, you know, and it's not to say that it doesn't come from white supremacy, but at some point, you know, we don't have masters and stuff anymore. And and yeah, sure, there's other things outside of that. And I'm not debating, I'm not saying you're wrong. But we also need to take, you know, it's within our community to police to police ourselves and say, you know what, collectively, like you were saying, that we need to be, we need to hold ourselves accountable and be like, yo, let's, you know, let's be, let's, let's try to do this differently. Let's try to be different. And, you know, I mean, it's, and it's, it's not to say that white supremacy is an excuse. No, it's a real thing. I get it. I'm a hundred percent there. Um, but I, I also think it, it deals with the human condition. We got people out there that just, and uh, <laughs> I've met some, some, some really, some characters that, that look like us. And I'm just like, wow, okay. Like we, we supposed to be in sync with each other and your agenda is, is, is on another level. And we could blame white supremacy, but I'd rather, or not rather, but I also think we should look at ourselves and say, yo, yeah, okay, it can be the system, but let's look at ourselves for a minute because I could date back to, you know, and it it just dates back to myself and not everybody is me and I totally get that, but I could have made a lot of different decisions in my life. That could have been, you know, and I and I never, there was, you know, maybe white supremacy was present maybe in my public school or whatever, but I never veered towards those things. I never made, you know, totally bad decisions. <laughs> I mean, I've made bad decisions in my life, but that was me. That was me. I can't. I can't say that was white supremacy. I, it was me that made that decision, and I had to stay ten. I had to stand ten toes down and be like, you know what? I'm going to eat this. I got to do what I got to do and I'm going to go on with, with what I do. You know what I'm saying? It, decisions I made were me. You know what I'm saying? Me trying to find balance is me. Like it's, I have to look at me and I think, I think that we, we as people, you know, I think people are doing that. I think you do it. You do a great job of doing it. 
but there are other people that that need to do that and i think that'll that starts the healing process for us as people to look and say yo you know what <laughs> i'm gonna look at all these external things but let's look at myself and say and not and there's no blame just look at yourself and say okay what can i do to make this to to to, to try to you know do these things better you know or, or whatever the case may be you know what i'm saying but you know it, it's you got i think it has to start with you it has to start with you and you know i i'm not saying that there isn't white supremacy rooted in a lot of things i'm 100 mm -hmm. sure it is but we have to start looking at ourselves you know what i'm saying you know who who was saving us during the crack era we saved ourselves Mm -hmm. we saved ourselves right nancy reagan said just say no mm -hmm. so what happened grandma stepped in took care of us and mm -hmm. foster moms took care of us mm -hmm. foster moms that look like us took mm -hmm. care of us you know what i'm saying we stepped in no one else came in and, and saved us we did and that's that's where it's gonna come from because mm -hmm. hey this shit is forever like you know what i'm saying or it, uh, until something drastically changes you know, maybe we need to storm the Capitol. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, well, that's the issue, right? <laughs> is to show that systemic piece. We wouldn't be able to, right? Oh, no, no, a black shot. woman oh, got no. shot busting yeah. a Yui in front of the Capitol. Yeah, yeah. So like, There's that's not the thing. But I, I think it's yeah. important. Introspection mm -hmm. is important. But with that, it's mm -hmm. figuring out and locating what are the things that we have uh, subscribed to as truth. And is that shit true? Because some of the shit that we believe in or have been conditioned to believe in or we believe in because all everyone in our circles believe in, some of that shit is rooted in white supremacy even if we don't realize it. They don't got to be white people, right? Like mm -hmm. this dude I always bring up in my workshops, he's a spoken word artist. His name is Wante. He said white supremacy isn't the shark. White supremacy is the ocean, right? So it's looking at where does that show up, right? Like how do we treat one another? Because sometimes that shit shows up in us. We were raised in these systems. We were, you know, some of us assimilated or did things in proximity to what we thought success was. And if success is always aligned with whiteness or with capitalism, right? Because people don't like when I say white supremacy, but it, capitalism is, is indicative of that, right? This belief that we ain't shit unless we producing right Bye. to the Bye. point that we can do this yeah, right like that's how that shows up that's why nobody can buy a house right now right like but you know we already <laughs> talked about capitalism we already had an episode of that but i think the, it's the yeah. self-awareness really? piece that shows up around where is my responsibility and my choices and having grace around those things like oh i thought fucked up i could do better now Mm -hmm. Or I used to be shitty to my people and throw them out or ghost them or think it's your fault you're a crackhead on the street or whatever. Or the fact that you use the language of crackhead versus knowing that there's a lot more layers than, oh, you just wanted to get high or, oh, you wanted to numb or self-soothe, right? Like there's right. things that we don't know because all of us are individual. Yeah. Even within the black and brown communities, that shit ain't monolithic because there's black and brown people caping for white people all the time, right? And I feel for them because I know that comes from a place and, you know, like I said before, I could be here for your, I could be here for like the liberation piece of you, but that don't mean we gotta be homies. That don't mean we gotta be in community, right? Especially if you sit here low key showing your ass or like only, you know, all, like only caper for <laughs> Kardashians or somebody light skin or someone pretty or a celebrity, right? Like, and not yeah. motherfuckers on the street or like you'll uh, say protect black women on Twitter and then still cross the street when you see somebody of color, right? Like those things show up in us, just locate it with yourself and stay 10 toes down uh, to that. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. That's nah, all. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, it's but yo, it's crazy too because so today um I was talking to somebody and they had it on a pair of Patrick Ewings. And I don't think mm. I don't know if you remember those. Mm -hmm. You might have been you were you were young. You were you were young, but they mm -hmm. you, you were born, you were around, but Patrick I Ewings, was around like, for Patrick. Like your sister would definitely know about like Patrick Ewings and like the need to have them, right? Yeah. And like you were like everything and then 
And then um, the following year, um, I had I had finally got a pair, mm. but, the, but the time had passed, and it became the felines with the strap. Right? Mm. You had mm. you had to have the felines with the strap or with else. the strap mm-hmm. with the strap because that was like the thing. And um, I can remember like the Ewans just took me right back to that point where it was just like, oh yeah, oh you're poor because you don't have the felines. And I'm like, mm. we all live in the project. What are you talking about? <laughs> and you're all poor. And right? you know, I laugh about it now, but that's you're very true about that. Like that's that's definitely, especially where I was living at the time, that was like the mindset. Mm-hmm. And, and I was living on Staten Island which is super segregated anyway. Mm, so especially all the, back then. All the projects mm. are towards, all the public housing is, I guess it's the north of the, the it's closest to, you know, as you're going to it's the ferry. It's sectioned off. It's, mm-hmm. it's going to the ferry. And then mm, right. like uh, Port Richmond is like the gate to, you know, like if you kind of came up, you moved to Port Richmond. Like you didn't really, you know, you didn't go to Tottenville yet, or you didn't go to like, you know, the further out by the mall where all the mobsters live with the million dollar homes and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Um, and that was definitely the feeling. It was like, oh, you ain't got like you're poor or whatever. It was just it was like the have and the have nots. Right. But we're, all, but we're all living in the projects. So, you know, if 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 we all had or had not, <laughs> if we all had. You really wouldn't be living here, right? We are we all here. <laughs> yeah, we all yeah. Here. but it's tough to see that at mm-hmm. that time, you know. Especially, you know, it, it's just part of and then a lot, you know, and a lot of that stemmed from the previous generation. Because yeah, I was like, you know, being a child, I never understood that. Oh, you looking like a poop That's mm-hmm. like a, that's like a Harlem thing. You know say, or oh, you know you. I heard that. Oh, you looking like a poop putt right now. You got a scuff mark on your Adidas or whatever. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell is a poop putt? I'm mm-hmm. like four, five. Like, what the hell is a poop putt? But, but I knew, okay, I don't want to be a poop putt. So, you know, I got the toothbrush. And, That's what this means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and you associate yourself. With that. You associate that with a status of mm-hmm. not being that. You know, and um, and it's it's, you know, I, I think within our community particularly it's a culmination of all those traumas that lead you know you grow up and then it's like you have to find balance and it's like have years of all this stuff yeah you know poverty is one layer (laughs) being a person of color Mm -hmm. is the is the next layer uh why does my hair look like this? Is mm. can be another layer. You know, why 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 do I live here? Is another right. layer. You know, why, you know, you, you, we have all these things. Fill in the traumas. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you become an adult and it's like, okay, go get them, Tiger. Right. You know everything. <laughs> you an adult, right? So get it all. <laughs> you good. You grown. Go get them, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> you had a nine to five also oh, uh, you super good yeah you got you got a check and it's like you got uh, insurance uh, uh you know i just i think it was i think it's a it's a great topic piece for people to you know look at yourself and think about what does balance mean to you mm-hmm. um and, and what do you think you need to obtain that and you know these are, you know I always when I talk to people I ask them and I tell them this isn't something to ask answer me you don't have to ask you have it's not a question I'm asking I'm I want you to answer I want you to process that yourself and think about it mm-hmm. because it's you know it, it, there is no right or wrong answer with that it's something mm. you kind of gotta you know it's trial and error it's uh you know learning from experience that didn't work for me today yeah try it again maybe see if it works tomorrow if it Mm -hmm. don't work you know it feels it feels is is a is a it's a tough thing you know it's 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 a it's definitely something that i think the 
this generation, Gen Z, is going to have a greater handle on. And hopefully they have a planet to, to, to be able to. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole other thing, right? But I think that's a perfect segue and a way to close is for yeah. folks to be like, you know, as, as folks are listening, what are your expectations around what balance is for you? And what's the reality of what ba- what is helpful for you with balance? Because sometimes they don't sound the same. And let us know, um, do you agree with us? Do you agree about the generational shifts? How do you show up for balance in your life? Um, so we can share stuff with each other. Uh, did you own a pair of Ewings back in the day? Did you yeah. own a pair of Ewings? Did you too have Ewing trauma that you want to unpack? Share that with us. Um, and on trauma? that note, did you label my trauma? Did you label it with a with a with a Ewing? It, it, that's a valid Ewing related trauma. So on that note, but because of time on task, thank y'all for listening. This is Cindy Lee, Sex on Shuffle. Just heck, just another podcast. We'll holler. Please. <laughs> you labeled my trauma. Go to work. I'll see you. I'll see you.